Um, and I will ask the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Present. Here. Barely. Here. Here. Present. Thank you very much. So uh, we will now move into the public comment period. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in the public comment <coughs> period? Seeing none, we'll move on then to announcements from the school committee. Uh, I do have one announcement. I just want to um, let people know that um, we're hoping to name the superintendent search committee by the end of next week and that anybody who is interested should have applications into the mayor's office um, by the end of this week and know that um, they need to be very free with their schedule from the third week of July um, through through the th third week of August. Thank you. Um, any other announcements from the school committee? Hearing none, then we'll move on to the reports and recommendations uh, sec section, and we will uh, con continue uh, the discussion of the FY14 uh, budget and the uh, post override uh, uh, vote with the new revenues that have been allocated to the school department. I'll turn it over to the superintendent. All right, thank you. I'd like to begin by saying thank you to the school committee for your thoughtful questions last week that led us to go back and take a look at the override proposal and uh, for, to allow me the time uh, to bring this back tonight. I feel that what I'm bringing back tonight is something that I'm uh, very proud of and confident in and I feel that uh, this proposal is in much better shape than last Thursday's uh, thanks to you. I also want to thank our administrative leadership team, many of whom are here tonight. I want to thank you for being here tonight and thank you for your input in developing this over the past 48 hours. I know we've had conversations and a lot of work uh, to make this what it is tonight. And so for the most part, I will try to answer your questions on this budget. And if I need to, I'll defer to one of our administrators to help with the specific details. So what I have for you tonight, uh, first the cover sheet. Uh, from the mayor about how the override money, the 2.5 million is going to be allocated. And you can see the 985,000 for the schools there. Um, the next piece you have. And I can just add that since your meeting on Thursday, the city council did in fact adopt that. So that is now, that allocation is the uh, official allocation of the city. Official for yeah. us, thank you. And thanks to the city council for that. Uh, the next sheet you have is the two and a half override proposal list and this is uh, changed so I'm going to talk you through just the changes I talked you th uh, through line by line last Thursday so I want to highlight the changes for you tonight and to help you the <coughs> second thing you have is a final copy we made a copy of the cuts from your budget book and if you want to flip that I think the main things that were in question were the high school and that's on the last page you have JFK and the high school so I wanted you to be able to have that in front of you so you could compare and the final piece you have in front of you is the enrollment, the projected enrollment. Now, remember, this is as of June 14th, and our enrollment changes between now and September 1st quite a bit. Now, what I mean by quite a bit isn't that the numbers will grow a lot or shrink a lot, but there are a lot of families that will move in and some families that will move out, which could re have a net result of an increase or de decrease in class sizes. But this is as of June 14th. The one thing I want to point out on this is that in Jackson Street, grade five was reduced to two sections um, due to a budget cut. That's part of our proposal tonight. If we bring uh, 0.5 of a teacher back, we can add that to a 0.5 teacher who's already there to help support that fifth grade. That will make that teacher whole. We can split that into three sections and we'll have that fifth grade down to 17 and 18, um, 17 and 16 per section, which is a very good class size. So with all that information in front of you, I want to start by talking to you about the, uh, the changes from last Thursday. Uh, we did talk about the assistant principal positions and those are uh, very important to us. Uh, the assistant principal positions were not uh, something that were in our cuts. That was a last minute adjustment when uh, we had to make the FY14 budget balance. Uh, we remember we voted to not fill four vacant positions and it just so happened that those, those four positions were vacant. So we, we absolutely do want those positions restored. 
And what I had in there last week was 88,000 was an estimated salary amount. That was because the two people who vacated those positions, Brian and Sal, uh, were at the top of the pay scale for the assistant principal. And so that was the amount of money that we projected to save by not filling the vacancy. However, as we move that down to what a beginning associate principal would make on step one, well, we can adjust that down to the first step, which is 75,000, therefore saving 13,000 per position, which gives us another 26,000 to put toward teaching positions, which is how we got to the major changes at the high school, uh, which you have before you today. So again, we have the system principal there. The art teacher, Cheryl Jaffe, will be restored to the full uh, 1.0 FTE. The music teacher, Deb Kuhn, is restored back to her position of 0.83, which is where she was before the cuts. Choir teacher, Bo Flahive, is back to 0.67, again, where she was, so she's fully restored in her position. Linda Pickering is going to be restored to 0.67. You recall last Thursday we had talked about adding even an additional section to her due to student demand for the class, but we've since pull that back we want to only use the override money to fund one section of Linda Pickering so um, she's uh, restored back to where she was uh, with the override money uh, 2.67 uh, theater teacher Stephen Eldridge is going to be restored to a full 1.0 position and then in technology video Michael Jacobson Hardy is the one that we weren't able we didn't have enough money to restore him completely his position was a 1.0 it was cut to a 0.5 and as of today, we have restored that to a 0.67, adding one more section to him. Brings us to the busing, and uh, my proposal is that we bring back the busing to the high school with the exact same system that we had this year. Uh, we do that next year while we're developing a plan for September 2014. And um, I do think that a committee should be put together to investigate efficiencies in busing, including the suggestion that Mr. Moore has offered um, having a system where, I won't go into the details, but um, where we have s students sixth grade through 12th grade on the same buses with the first stop being at JFK and the second stop being at the high school. Uh, I think that idea certainly has merit. It's worth rolling out, but it, it, it deserves conversation with the community and with the families who will be using the bus services. So um, we can go forward on that. We just can't go forward on it right now. So I'm proposing the busing restored as is. Let me pause and see if you have any questions for me. Could I maybe start with a motion um, to to just to approve these uh, for we'll purposes of discussion? Proposal as presented tonight. Okay. Second. Okay. So now it's been moved and seconded. So now, are there questions or uh, Ms. Duvall? Um So just for clarification, um, the Northampton High School the video mm -hmm. photographer to point six seven is the only one that didn't go exactly back to where it was. Okay. And the reasoning for that? Um, the, I guess the best way to describe that is we did add two uh, computer uh, technology courses that students were very excited about. I believe we added those two sections. We had almost 50 kids sign up for those two. And so um, though that isn't a part of the override, those are some two additional sections. And uh, I believe the, ph the philosophy for the future of the high school is they would like to develop um, the technology courses and software design, computer design, things like that, um, and incorporate photography and video into that, but make it more focused on technology. Whereas photography um, is a great course and is uh, truly a visual art. Um, the direction is to bring in more technology. One of the reasons is that when we bring in the uh, mass core curriculum, we need to have technology courses that students will be required to take, therefore we're required to provide them. And so they want to uh, begin to go in that direction now. We were supposed to, we were looking to approve the Mass Core curriculum this year. Obviously we didn't have enough funding to make that happen, but we are looking to do that next year. Well, I'm concerned that we're taking override money and, and putting in new programs um, while we didn't restore what we had. And also that I heard that the, um, Freshmen weren't even offered 
photography. So right. perhaps the courses would have filled had they been offered all the way around. I mean, it was a successful yeah. I program. do need to clarify what you said. We did not use override money to put in new programs and not bring back these programs. We used as much override money as we could to restore the things that we could. Well, I thought we, we moved ahead um, to the consumer science. We gave her an, an additional. We did not. No, you can we see ended that. Up going I took right that back, back to that. Yes. Okay. So then that's the only cut there of the arts that that's we decided to take at that point? We weren't able to restore that fully, right? Are you through with your questioning for Thank now? you right now. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Ms. Yeah. Peck? I, 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 uh, this is not a question. This is a comment. I really, really want to thank the superintendent and his administrative team for being so open to our um, questions and comments um, at the meeting and in, in meetings that, and phone calls that um, some of us have had um, since then. Um, I'm sure the last thing administrators really want is the school committee telling, micromanaging and telling you what to do and what not to do. But we also hear from constituents, especially uh, people who just recently voted and really wanted to know that, they are, that the reasons for the people who voted yes, as well as for the people who voted no, knowing that their tax dollars are going to the programs that they really wanted to support. And I am so grateful to you for uh, making these changes. Um, I, and I, I really support them. And I'm just, um, uh, just kudos to you for you know coming in in the summer and, and working this and working this. Um, m my biggest concern, and I'm just, um, just curious how it's all going to play out in terms of um, scheduling, because now we're, we're putting in sections at, at the high school that weren't there in the schedules when the kids left and the guidance counselors are now on summer vacation, and how does that all get played out and how do, the, how, how do you do all that? <laughs> Well, I think the simple answer is that though uh, some people are off for the summer, some of us are still there working every single day. And uh, changes have to be made. And uh, principals, principal secretaries, uh, people are there as families come in and are new to town or want to change their schedule. And we make those adjustments every day throughout the summer. So are there kids who are signed up for courses that are actually not being um, offered now and then there are uh, courses that are being offered that we weren't counting on before and kids need to be called or how does how does that logistically work well um, the best way I can answer it, and if I'm missing something Brian or Nancy would you please uh, fill in uh, way I understand it, the guidance counselor worked uh, five days after school ended there were the three days last week and two days this week putting schedules together of course this wasn't officially voted so now what the way I think it is there are a couple sections that we're adding that are new and what they'll do is um, teachers have a lot of contact uh, with kids and they will sort of recruit kids to come and sign up for their classes and we'll be able to do that over the summer using the skeleton crew that we have in the building. Um, did I answer that correctly? <laughs> list so now it's just to go and um, put them back back in and, and the music teachers recruiting you know some kids that she knows that wanted to be in her program so I'm not really worried about um, you know that and we have an out program at our school where the kids need electives as well so that will be very helpful so um, I wouldn't worry about the classes filling but it will take some work because guidance is done today <laughs> thank you thank you so I'm, I'm, I'm really I mean as an arts person and being in an arts community, the more that we can put toward arts. I mean, we, we've restored most of what we had last year. We're not back to where we were years ago, and I hope that we can move in that direction, but I'm, I'm just so grateful to all of you. I really am. Thank you. Other questions uh, or comments about this proposal? Mr. Moore. I have one little tiny question, and I have a bigger sort of comment, which won't won't affect this budget, but I hope, hopefully we could, we could take, think about for future budget years. Um, I, there's the question about um, the technology video photo teacher. Mm -hmm. That that position, I, I'm confused about the answer for why it wouldn't be restored to full time. Um, because if, if, if our idea is that we're going to be more towards a sort of a you know whatever that is called media technology mm -hmm. direction we don't have some other position that we're creating to do that and do we uh, 
So uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is it seems like we want to keep that position fully funded if we're planning to yeah. expand in that area. And as opposed to... Well, you remember my comment last Thursday. If you allocate enough resources for me to bring everything back, we'd like to bring a lot more back. Um, we had to make some difficult decisions on what we could bring back. And right, what and, and, and that's what, so then that's my next suggestion yeah. that has to do with that specifically was, um, you know, uh, this, this question of, it was one of the first things I think you mentioned after you did your survey of the school district a couple of years ago was how we are essentially not funded by ourselves. I mean, w without external funding, um, the schools would just pretty much stop. Um, <laughs> And uh, I've thought about that a lot in terms of these kind of cuts. You know, which, which things can we cut that nobody else can replace as opposed to which things can we cut which somebody, somebody else, like PTOs or somebody, can pick up. And it's not that we should be doing that, but if we don't have enough money and it's a choice between one and the other, it seems like the choice would be to cut the thing that people can fundraise for and contribute to. Specifically, um, and the way that this budget has come back in would be, you know, the supplies budgets because that is something people can fundraise for and that PTOs can purchase and donate supplies, um, whereas PTOs cannot hire teachers. <laughs> um, that just wouldn't work. So um, I would suggest that the I would like I would like us to consider. While well, I understand that these supply budgets are ridiculously small, still. Um, I would suggest that in order to get sort of to bring our at least our teaching staff, in other words, the number of positions sort of back up to where they were before this year's budget, mm -hmm. right? Before our June, it was our April budget, the, the budget we passed before this, yeah, before this budget. Yeah. Um, that I would like just to bring our, our, our the number of positions back up to this level, and um, th because that's the only that's something we have to pay for. We can't. It's not even, while it may be too much to expect f from PTOs to pay for all those other things, it's mm -hmm. not too much to ask, whereas it is too much to ask for them to pay for teaching positions. So I would suggest that if we could, you know, out of the um, $90,000 that we've budgeted for s school supplies, if we could use, you know, because it's really a very small amount when you get down to it for the high school. and. Of course, then I, get, I know at a real if you look at the cuts at the elementary schools, we haven't fully restored those either. Am I correct? Uh, no, I believe we have. Because we're uh, we have. We okay, have. well then that's very good. Because I was thinking we might need to want to find more money to restore some get to get to get. If the goal would be to get our number of positions back to what we had before okay. this budget. I, I believe, and our elementary principals are here that they've been restored fully, and um, in addition, also the supply and textbook money is something that uh, they're very much looking forward to. Because well, I understand, that's in I, addition, I just, they haven't had that before. I understand it's a tremendous thing because yeah. we don't have it. <laughs> uh, so I'll. Uh, so I would suggest that that, you, that out of that ninety thousand, if we could take that amount of money to to get our staffing back to to where it was. It was not that much money, I don't think, if I'm looking at this right. I'm, I'm thinking it's like $10,000 or something um, for, the, for the additional point three or something that mm -hmm. you're looking at. That's all I'm, that's all I'm, that's my only suggestion. But, you would have, but that's a suggestion or a proposal? Well, I don't know. I'd like to hear okay. some yeah. Well, my, my do you want me to respond to that? Lisa, you want to respond? I'm no, sorry, Ms. Minnick? I a question about this question. I mean, okay. <laughs> I was going to agree for you to respond. <laughs> Um, I'll take a shot at responding. Okay. If I don't go in the right direction, you can help me out. Uh, let me start by the supplies and uh, textbook money. So if you're to round the high school enrollment, it's, it's 904. Let's round it to 1,000 for the ease of math. Uh, if it were 1,000 kids, it's $23,000 in supplies. You're looking at $23 per kid. When you're talking about biology and chemistry and PE and wellness, where there's a lot of equipment and supplies that we need to buy, and $23 per student is really not a lot of money. Uh, so that's pretty precious to our high school administration. Right. My second comment is I, I do appreciate your advocacy for the teachers in our district, and we, you know, we care about them. We have good teachers, and we want to be able to support them. In this particular case, I believe it's a curriculum decision that the high school administration, the high school guidance, they have made a, a curriculum decision uh, taking the school in a direction that they feel is best for the academic performance of the school and the technology, video, photo, 
um, extra sections are not a part of their vision or their strategic plan going forward. So um, though I fully respect that this is a budget that school committee should um, be very much involved in, and you are, I think we need to draw the line at making curriculum decisions and sections offered for the high school. I think that we need to separate school committee from those administrative choices. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my specific was question was going to be, yeah. if we were to restore that, would those sections fill, or would we be offering, you know, classes for 15, 10 kids, or, you know, so, yeah. in other words, not really wasting, right. but kind of wasting our money? Well, no, yeah, I mean, my concern is that, um, that I guess I'd like to hear an explanation of why that's the direction we want to take it, that we want to have, if we're, if we're both increasing the amount of technology that we are, want to integrate into what we, edu our education, so that would include then technology in the arts. At I the same time as we're reducing the, the <coughs> amount of, you know, money we spend on personnel to teach that, it, it strikes me as actually being inconsistent with that curriculum direction. So I guess that's, that's my concern and that's why I was wondering if we couldn't find a way to actually support that curriculum direction by funding the personnel necessary to teach it. I'm, I'm positive that it sounds like I'm hedging a little bit on my answer and uh, there's a good reason for that. I would like to be able to discuss the curriculum. I'd like to be able to discuss the restoration. Um, but it's also complicated with personnel, you know, private personnel issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not okay for us to discuss here. Um, so I think we could answer it in a curriculum way uh, if, if Principal Athos or new Principal Lombardi would like to answer that, but we need to keep the the employee out of that answer. Yeah. I think Lou, you asked um, about photography and for freshmen, and I'm I'm going to tell you that there are 29 students in Section A and 29 in B, so it was offered to the freshman class and then um, there's a video section with 17 students in it and there's a computer class brand new that has 30 students in it and that's what what we're trying to do kids come from JFK and we have nothing to offer them in terms of computer and with a mass core we're moving in that direction so if I could answer it it would be then it would take this year to build the program and kids would get interested in it because they take a photography and then they can take a video and that's all that was offered so we're trying to grow the um, computer part of the program. I mean, the fact that 30 kids signed up for computer science and the way we did that was through math, through the, a new um, a math teacher, two actually, two math teachers left. Uh, every year we get parents asking about business classes. I mean, we're very strong in the arts, but um, so that's what we're trying to do. I guess the, the problem that I have is that I understand curriculum changes. However, when we have an override and we tell the public we're going to be bringing back the arts, then to go and make a curriculum change at this point seems to me to be inconsistent. I, I happen to agree with Howard. I think that it's a matter of priority and I, th and I do understand that even if we were making a directional change that, as Howard said, we could still promote the program as we're going and um, without getting into the personnel issue. I've heard that we have very qualified personnel over there that are able to teach the multimedia, um, digital, you know, new curriculum. I just have a really hard time changing the curriculum um, when this was supposed to be override and now we're talking about curriculum because I think that the discussing the curriculum is very, very important and we've discussed as a committee of whether or not to even keep the curriculum um, subcommittee or not so that we would have that to discuss and I think that that's where this discussion should be not right now when we're bringing in an override to bring back to restore what we lost just a little background that starts in January um, when we're there doing their program of studies and each department's asked um, if they're going to offer some new classes and we were pushing in that direction to offer new classes and the um, the that department wrote up the curriculum that they were going to offer so it didn't change just of late it changed before the kids even picked out their classes that was an option to them to do it and we were trying to move in that direction slowly so it, it it's way back in January so have the class has not been filled that particular class is full at 30 and the f photography but he just had enough for three sections so and I also want to add to your, your statement 
Um, we have brought back the arts. We have brought, you know, we do not have students. You're not going to hear people not getting what they wanted from band to theater. I mean, they, we are offering, we have a full schedule. Um, we have brought that. But we are at times, you know, being influenced, you had mentioned, Stephanie, about class sizes. So there is an element that if we don't have something to fill it, that becomes part of the issue, and we, and we move students. So with the um, offering that Brian and Mr. St Superintendent Salzer is bringing forward, we are able to um, more than appropriately meet the needs of our students for the sign-ups that they have for the, their desired classes. In the past, has it been, has the photography not been filled? Have, have you had to shift people, or has the photography been filled to capacity with, in the past? It's, it's been not filled to capacity, but filled. But that's before there was the computer science that we put in back in, in January based on what we, the response from our NIESC evaluation and all of that. So we're giving kids, we offered some AP psych. The kids, they, there's three full sections of that. So I think they're pulling from different directions. And um, the kids in Northampton High are really hungry to try something new. And I think that, you know, um, I, I don't want to play with the word technology. Yeah, I, th I think that the new class that's being offered, computer science, absolutely technology, manipulating technology. I think right now that the photography, flat, the photography class, though it's using some manipulation on the computer, I, I, w I think our kids are looking for more. They're looking more to engage in, you know, it, whether it's writing software, gaming, how do you write games, understanding the processes that go behind how do, com how do computers actually work. You know, what are the log, um, algorithms that are involved in that? That's what they're looking for. We're trying to give them more of that background. It seems to me that it's, it's um, and I hate to use the word playing politics, but to me it seems like it's playing politics when we take and what should be a curriculum decision goes outside of that, that arena and turns from an override into a curriculum decision. I would be more than happy to discuss the curriculum as far as what, what Northampton was going to implement and everything else, but I, I just have a hard time doing it when we were supposed to be doing overrides and now it just feels like almost, I don't know, bait and switch is a little hard, but you pull something in, you pull something back out, and I just, I would like to see it all restored. But we, but I, but we, are, we have restored everything. Okay. No, you haven't restored the um, photography right. or that department, okay. because maybe it necessarily wouldn't be the photography, but I, I know that the, the man over there has a lot of experience, he's written books and everything else, and not to get into the personnel, I'm just thinking that he could possibly teach beyond just the photography. Now and we're, getting we're getting into, into the, the personnel. personnel. All right, yeah. sorry. We hear so your opinion, and then. Yeah. Okay. So I have. Well, I just think that we. I've, I've got I'm it. trying not I've to get it. into the personnel, but I'm just saying that we hire people that are well rounded. I don't think that we are hiring people just in general that are just, you know, I think that we're hiring good teachers in the first place. That's as much as the personnel. So other than that, I apologize. Hear your suggestion, and it's noted. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Shefflow has been waiting for. Uh, just for just so that I'm clear, when, he's, you, when we mentioned that there are two new computer classes, those are computer science classes specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to get the, yep, the computer the, science. Okay, um, and I do just want to say I, I agree with you, Brian. I think that we sometimes can can uh, blur the line between technology and assume that it's all the same. And mm -hmm. I bet everybody here in this room probably has a phone in their pocket that can have a camera on it. So they're now they're engaging in digital media, but I wouldn't say that that's the same thing as learning technology. I'm the 10% that doesn't. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I have two, so I make up for you, okay? Um, so I, I, think, I think it's important to know that, that we can't, and I rely on, on the administrative team to say, who are the right people to teach the courses mm -hmm. that we want to right. develop? And I, so I just thank you for that clarification. I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Thank you. I, I guess I'll go ahead and say it, but I really... Ms. Duvall said again that she felt that it was bait and switch if we're, you know, if we said we were going to do one thing and then we do something else because of the override. And I want to reiterate that everyone has said that they made this curricular move back in January before the override was even, you know, a glimmer in the mayor's eye. So I think that we should, I think that this is a direction a curricular direction and whether or not the school committee has a curriculum subcommittee or not you know it's a direction that the administration at the high school decided to go in with the blessing of the superintendent and the then director of academic effectiveness i'm assuming and it is the direction that's going to be required of us shortly if we accept the common core curriculum did i hear that correctly that's correct. so given those things you know, 
I, I just don't want to tell people that we said we were going to bring back something and we're not bringing it back after the override. That seems disingenuous also. So it's not, they, they didn't do the bait and switch right now. They did the bait and switch a long time ago, if that's <laughs> what you call it. <laughs> I have to explain that to people when they're I really said. wish we weren't using that term. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Minnick. Uh, Mr. Minnick. Uh, Mr. Moore. And this is my general comment that, um, again, won't affect these numbers at all, but I think it's, we need to start thinking, again, long in advance of next year's budget and the one after that about sort of the basis upon which we decide what courses we're going to offer when we're having to make cuts or when we're having to make changes, when we're having to make these kind of things. That I think one of the, you know, the when you have financial pressures, it's very easy to do the thing of, well, how many students are in the classroom? So it's a dollar per student sort of decision, which is not a curricular decision. And, um, and, and it's almost like you almost have to do it that way when the dollars are very, very limited. The problem with that is, at that point, we really should just ask, how many people can we get in the auditorium? And, you know, because that will be our most e efficient use of our teaching dollars. And that's not, but that's not what we want to be doing. We want to be running a high school where we're teaching people in a way we feel is appropriate. And it's just, I, I guess what I'm saying is that, that using the enrollment in a class to determine whether or not that class should be offered is, while I understand the validity of it in tight, with the tight money, it is really, really far away from our purpose as a, as a school district to be eliminating classes which we believe have merit academically simply because they have fewer people have either can or have chosen to enroll in them. And it's, which then touched on my next sort of thought is that I've been thinking about this in the last couple of weeks, well, maybe the last couple of months, um, which is back to another thing which I'm pretty sure our administration is working on which has to do with our daily schedule. Because one of, the, one of the reasons there's so much pressure and why it's really easy to get a class that doesn't have very, you know, in the non sort of MCAS subjects, why it's very easy to have a class with a small enrollment is because it's very hard as you're filling out your schedule as a high school student to be able to enroll in one of those classes. You know, that by the time you've done a foreign language, a math, a science, and a history, oh my gosh, <laughs> you haven't even gotten an English. Or by the time you've done, <laughs> you know, by the time you've done an English, a math, a science, and a foreign language, oh my gosh, I haven't even done a history, and so on. Where is, where is your art class? Where is your sort of more specialized kind of variation of one of those themes? You know, when are you getting away from a core kind of a class? We just don't have room for it in the schedule, and so it makes it, it doubles the pressure on the sort of, I guess what we call electives, since they're all electives, but but on these ones that aren't sort of the MCAS kind of courses that, you know, college prep directly kind of classes, it, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure to get any kind of enrollment in them because students are so limited in their ability to enroll in those classes. And I think that, in a way, you know, it, it's like a pretty vicious cycle then. If you cut the classes because they have smaller enrollment, well, there have to be those classes because everybody has to enroll in, you know, those sort of big five subjects. And then, so as a result, those get, and pretty soon you can have very quickly none of those classes, and I think that would be a real shame in the high school. So I, I really hope that both in terms of what the administration is doing, I know thinking about the daily schedule, but also in terms of how we approach sort of measuring where we want to make our cuts when we have to make our cuts down the road, that we remember to weigh through the merit as, as an educational institution try to get it in there against the, the obvious sort of inexorable financial pressures to spread our dollars, you know, divide them up <laughs> over as many students as possible. Uh, Ms. Minnick. Um, I, I just want to tell Mr. Moore that I agree completely with what you've said and that I hope you didn't misinterpret what my question about class size. Well, no, because, I okay, because I was asking about if we put a class in, what would its enrollment be, not saying, did this have such a low enrollment that that's why we cut it out? I do understand that, but, it's, but it's, it is sort of the flip it, side. It same, is the flip the side, involved. but in this particular instance, it really was about would there be enough enrollment to warrant mm -hmm. our putting it back is my question. And it sounds to me like 
many of the students who might have enrolled in that class are really enrolled in the computer science classes now and that there might not be right. and that's the direction that they want the curriculum to be going so with an explanation like that I feel comfortable with the recommendation that's brought to us if they didn't have any rationale I might have taken a whole different position on this Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I didn't. Oh. No. Um, so, uh, of course, I'm asking for your support for this budget, um, this proposed uh, allocation for the override budget money, and, and I, I hope that you will vote to allow us to go forward with this. However, I think there are two very important points that were brought up that need to be addressed as we go forward. Um, first, you remember the plan and the presentation that we put uh, together for the math change that affected JFK and the high school. It was studied, it was presented, it was, it was thoughtful. It wasn't necessarily 100% uh, popular, um, but you had a full understanding of what we were doing, what, why we were doing it, when we were going to do it, and that was, uh, that was very well communicated and implemented. Uh, when our curriculum uh, subcommittee met in the fall, we began to discuss the mass core curriculum, but we quickly decided that we weren't going to be able to afford to implement it, and so that went off the table. Therefore, when the program of studies came out in January and there were some changes to the sections, that isn't something that would have required the same amount of, of presentation to the school committee. However, it should have had some discussion at the subcommittee level, and I think that we missed that, and we should we should note that, and bring our curriculum subcommittee together in August, September, and October, which is the most important time, so that any changes they we want to recommend, and again, to look at the Mass Core uh, for January, we should be doing that in the fall. In addition, and connected to what you said, Mr. Moore, about the high school schedule, though we have, in some cases, implemented an A-B schedule for some of the electives, I do think that we need to continue to look at that four block schedule and find a way to build in some flexibility so kids have more opportunities to take the elective classes. So I think both of those two issues should be referred to the curriculum subcommittee and we should not let those drop. Are there any other comments or, or uh, questions about the uh, motion that's on the table? Uh, that's the motion to approve the recommendation, the recommended uh, allocation of funds. Are we, are we going to go through and, and, and look at the other ones or just the high school? Are we going to look at because... I think those were the ones that changed from, since, last, uh, Thursday. from the last Thursday yeah. that there were questions raised. Well, I have a question about the eliminating of the .5 FTE um, ETL teacher and they don't, they aren't coming back? Which is, I mean, I just... Right. Thank you for bringing that up. I remember you asked me about that last Thursday and I did talk to our Director of Special Education, Lori Farkas, who's here tonight. Right. Um, to give you a more specific answer on um, their ETLs at the elementary schools who have been cut and we are still going to obviously meet the needs for those students and those families and I was hoping that you could speak to that for just a moment tonight. <coughs> um, can you repeat the question? The full question. It was concerning the um, ETL positions. The uh, elementary ETL. ETL. Yeah. educational team right. liaisons. So with those positions being eliminated, and that wasn't necessarily a part of the budget, that's a part of the restructuring of special education. Correct. Um, do you want to talk to how we're meeting those needs? Yes. So um, the ETLs performed a few functions. Um, one is they coordinated the scheduling of team meetings. Um, they were uh, beyond the special education teacher that's the liaison for a particular student and family. Um, they're the next line if a parent has a question um, about special education. Um, they also help facilitate the mailings and things uh, of reports and invitations and um, other, other types of special education information to families from the schools. Um, in addition, they uh, facilitated some, but not all, team meetings, and they were um, responsible for running and then writing the team meetings for initial evaluations and re-evaluations, which happen every three years for special needs students. Um, in the coming year, 
Um, we, in some cases, we've tweaked the number of special, the number of FTEs of special education teachers in each school, so the caseloads are lighter. Um, so the expectation is teachers will run their own initial and reevaluation meetings and write those IEPs themselves. Um, the special education office will be available to um, to do the scheduling of team meetings if teachers would like us to do that. Uh, the special education office, meaning the student services centralized mm -hmm. office. And um, I will be talking with principals about having the um, partially using some special ed grant money to um, help underwrite a little bit of the clerical um, staff in each of the elementary schools so they will then ma do the mailings of the invitations and reports to families. That's a quick summary. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions Did about that? that? Uh, answer your question. Yes, it answers what they were doing. Okay. So who's going to be doing all of those? I mean, the teachers right now. I mean, they're going to be taking over some of it. But, I mean, how, is, how do the duties shift so that we no longer have, I mean, we were eliminating half-time teachers? We're not eliminating any special education teachers. Okay. There is no elimination of special education teachers. <coughs> In fact, there is addition of special education teachers at the high school, at Jackson Street, at Bridge Street, not Bridge Street, um, Leeds, and I think that's it. Just and right the, off. And the, the district-wide behavior. And consultant. Um, right. and there are district-wide personnel that will be taking the place of a large quantity of contracted out services. So we will get a lot more um, service for our dollar, essentially. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Were there other questions that folks had about the uh, proposal that's on the table right now for the, the committee's consideration? Okay. Hearing none, I will then ask for uh, a vote. So all those in favor of uh, of adopting uh, this uh, these this set of recommendations for the allocation of the additional nine hundred and eighty five thousand uh, to the school department, say aye. Do you folks even know what the district personnel is? I don't know what he asked you that question. Um, so this, this isn't uh, time for public participation. So really, uh, this is yeah. We we <laughs> we have a public comment period. Um, so, all those in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. So I believe that was a vote of five to one. So the motion carries and it is adopted. So uh, we'll move on to the next item. I do not believe we have any new business items. Um, and then the only other item was just the announcement of our future business and meeting dates. Uh, we have a school committee meeting uh, next Thursday, July 11th, 2013. Um, and that uh, will be actually begin at 6.15 with an executive session. And then we'll move into our normal public comment period for 7.15. And then there's a school committee meeting scheduled for August 8th at 7.15 p.m. Is there a motion, motion to, to adjourn? Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? The meeting is adjourned. <clears throat>